What happens when a good painter is also a mathematician? A work of art full of symbols, deep meanings and math. How is it possible? After the intro we'll find out. Hi and welcome back to Exploring Art, this is Alessandro. We are learning a lot in this series about Renaissance. By the way, if you haven't done it yet, remember to subscribe so you won't miss the next episodes. And today I want to talk about another important and famous painting, The Baptism of Christ by Piero della Francesca. This painting, apparently simple, is actually full of symbolisms and meanings. We shouldn't be surprised since Piero was not just a great artist, but also a very good mathematician, humanist and one of the first experts on perspective. In the baptism of Christ we can find all these elements and what's insane is that every single thing I'm going to tell you is a piece of a puzzle that composes this painting, seriously. So get a coffee and now I'm going to hide my face so you can enjoy better the video and the coffee as well probably. The temperament panel was commissioned by the Camaldolese Monastery of San Sepolcro, the village in Tuscany where Piero was born, but the dating is controversial. Presumably it was painted sometime about 1440. What we know for sure is that it was originally part of a triptych with side panels of St. Peter and St. Paul and a predella. Remember that if you don't know the meaning of the blue words, you can find them in the description and they are linked to the glossary on my website. The composition depicts the figure of Christ being baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. The flying dove above Jesus' head represents the Holy Spirit in the Catholic symbolism and we can see how Piero painted it resembling the clouds in the sky to harmonize it better in the scene. Jesus is exactly in the middle aligned with John's hand and the bowl and the dove, forming an axis which divides the painting into parts. Of course, the scene shows Jesus' baptism, so it makes sense he is in the middle, but the meaning is deeper. The original triptych frame, in fact, may have included a roundel above the dove showing God the Father, which with Christ and the dove would complete the Holy Trinity. Triptych frame Holy Trinity recalls of the number three and it's not over yet. The Holy Trinity is one of the foundations of the Roman Catholic religion, but here Piero wanted to make it really central and evident. Why? Once again there is a reason. The painting was contemporary to the Council of Florence 1431-1445, whose goal was the unification of the Western and Eastern churches since there were different points of view about many topics, like the role of the Holy Trinity. The Camaldolese monk, Saint Ambrogio Traversari, who died in 1439, had been prior general of the Camaldolese congregation and a strong supporter of the Union and about the importance of the Holy Trinity. The painting wants to show that and hides also other symbols. Behind the man getting undressed on the right, there are figures dressed in an oriental fashion, probably Byzantine dignitaries who came for the council. The three angels have different meanings as well. They are three first of all, and the colors, red, white and blue, are the colors of the Trinitarian Order, defenders of the Holy Trinity. At the same time, two angels are hugging each other, showing the union between the two churches and the first one on the left has the hand in a position that meant harmony and peace. The angels and the other figures as well are painted with precise traits, but we are probably surprised by the intense light. A light that makes the scene a bit unnatural, but it allows to make every detail visible since the main purpose is to communicate a clear message. For example, a detail that is visible, even if very far, is the city, probably San Sepulchre in background, between the third angel and Jesus. Another symbol is the connection between the tree and Jesus. Similar on the color, the tree represents solidity, strength and the connection between the earth and sky. Talking about the tree, why is it placed exactly there? Of course it's not casual. Piero della Francesca was also a mathematician and the location of the tree is coherent to the golden ratio. Once again we learned how even a painting apparently simple hides a lot of meanings and details, in particular here thanks to the master Piero della Francesca who was able to combine art with science. 
leave your comments and remember to subscribe because in the next episode we are going to discover one of the most important architecture in the world. Ciao!